As a commercial real estate professional, you manage complicated decisions every day, and to make the right call, you need the full story. Moody's Analytics CRE harnesses the expansive, integrated data and analytical expertise from across the Moody's organization, then curates it specifically for commercial real estate professionals. Learn how to make better decisions and improve CRE workflows with the Moody's Analytics CRE Solution Suite at reese.com. That's R-E-I-S dot com. Welcome to WMRE's Common Area Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the award-winning editorial staff at WMRE. Let's jump right into this week's podcast. Hello and welcome to the Common Area with your host, David Bodemer. David, how are you today? Doing well. We are having some nice fall weather in nice. New York, finally, at the end of September. <laughs> so, um, Cooling down yeah. a little bit in the city, is it? Yes, it's, it's yeah, we're having, it's finally, I, I've had the air conditioners on for almost all September, which seems a little nuts, but um, yeah, now, now, now we can actually get some fresh air again. Yeah, I feel like a lot of air conditioners are waving that white flag. Just, I forget <laughs> it. I, I give up. Uh, you know, so it's, it's nice to get to this cooler weather. Uh, today, you've got a guest on the show. Who'd you bring on? So this week, we've brought on Dan Gorsicki, who is the managing director at True Rate, which is a full service commercial real estate advisory firm. So hi, Dan. Uh, welcome to the podcast. David, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So if we could just do a quick, uh, I did a very quick, you know, title name of the firm, but you know, for folks that uh, may not be aware, could you just give us a little more information about your company and even a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm with True Rate Services, which is a startup um, mortgage banking uh, and sales brokerage arm. Uh, basically, it's doing what traditional mortgage and sales brokers have done for decades and putting a twist on it, adding an online portal feature where People can get immediate feedback for their debt and sales requests. Um, I've been in this business 34 years and doing it the old, the traditional way of, you know, using the phone and and uh, and computer to access lenders and and buyers and sellers. But clearly, clearly over the last uh, few years, being online and having an online portal, it looks like the um, uh, and the pandemic may have spurred it on. Uh, the marketplace seems ready to have such a thing. Yeah, for sure. There's been so much capital and innovation in the prop tech side. So that's kind of what caught my eye is, 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 is what you guys are doing at true rate. So that's what I was hoping we can kind of talk a, a little bit about, which is just if you could sort of walk us through how that works, how it came about, um, you know, how the how the firm came together and you know, just just give us a little bit. Of sure. That. Well, our, our parent company, or if you will, is a, is a company called Olive Tree Holdings, which is an owner of about uh, two dozen apartment complexes uh, throughout the country. And basically, they got the idea because when they went for financing each time, you know, and it's like like we say in this business, every time you go for financing, it's like giving birth. I mean, it's it's a struggle and it's uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of obstacles along the way. And I, they just thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way where we can get an opaque marketplace uh, where it could be streamlined, it could be quicker, and you can have full transparency as to, you know, what lenders are looking at it and what their um, feedback is and so forth. So that's how it got it got born out. And uh, basically, I came over from Avis and Young, where I was doing it the traditional way, and said, you know what, um, you know, it, you got to adapt. And uh, I, I saw their vision, and I'm running with it, and it's it's uh, so far so good. So, how do you get the source that information from from the from the lenders? How are they putting their their stuff into into this into this tool? Well, they're not really putting their stuff into the tool. What they're doing is. Um, they're, they're seeing the requests come through from borrowers. Okay. I see. And if it, if it meets their criteria, they're immediately jumping on it and, and you know, giving their, well, in some cases, if, if all the information is there, giving a soft quote immediately. So borrowers that enter their information, um, you know, thoroughly within 48 hours, they're getting a soft quote back. So there's no more of this, you know, call your broker 10 times and, 
you know, he, he calls, he just goes to his golfing buddy and one mm -hmm. other friend. And that's, and that's the only quotes that they get here. It's, you're getting, you know, everybody that is, is uh, accessing our, our, uh, on the other side of our, our portal, they can, they can immediately uh, give quotes. So, so if I'm understanding it right, basically you're a borrower, you are looking for financing, you come to this tool, you enter your specs, and then that goes out to you, you, you surface that then to the lenders who can come back and, and, and see if that checks their boxes or not. That's exactly right. And it's, it's, it works. It's a win-win because the borrowers are happy that they're getting access to dozens of lenders that they've never accessed before. And they, they, they get, like I said, fully transparent. And on the lender side, they're happy too, because they're getting deal flow, um, you know, and can immediately, they don't have to ask the broker for, you know, 20 different questions. Uh, you know, it's all there. It's all streamlined and, and um, you know, uh, all everything that they would want has been asked of the borrower. And is this for just specific kinds of financing or, or anything, construction loans, permanent, permanent loans, mezzanine? No, it, it's for anything. I mean, it started before I got here, it started as multifamily owner only mm -hmm. because that's who, what Olive Tree had sort of um, uh, only done in the past. When I got here, it was like, you know, hey, there's no reason it shouldn't be for retail, office, hotel, construction, everything. Um, clearly, certain property types are easier than others um, to to use a portal system. For multifamily, it's obviously the easiest because you, you know you got the rents, you got the expenses. There's not a lot of moving parts. Right. Um, you know, for things like you know uh, hotel, it's a little more difficult, and for construction, it's a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, we have a lot of programmers that are that are figuring out ways to make user friendly pages. And, and ways for them to input their information so that the lenders will have useful information on the other side. And is there like a typical deal size that, that this works for, or is it again across the board? Well, it works for every deal size, but as you can imagine, um, you know, the way this, this sort of industry started on the uh, online, you know, smaller borrowers were attracted to it more. Right. So if you if you're a first time borrower and you need a two million dollar loan, you may not have a banking relationship. Mm -hmm. So those gravitate the most to our site. Clearly, we would love to upgrade that and get 20, 30 million dollar loans where we could even get it to where institutional capital owners would use it um, as well. So that's sort of the education. And once it catches on, I think we'll get more and more uh, larger deal size, more institutional players. And how have you been uh, going about raising awareness on this to both the borrower community and the lender community? It's been a combination of everything you could think of, everything from um, going to conferences, we're going to the big prop tech conference and doing a presentation in Las Vegas next week. Um, we are um, advertising in places like the Miami Herald and, and, and other places. We are in a lot of trade publications. Um, you know, we have a PR firm, so it, it's basically just organic. I mean, you know, we we you know Instagram and and LinkedIn and everything like that, and you know, word of mouth also. Um, so it's it's becoming more and more prevalent that we're the you know the dominant player in the industry. Can you sit, tell us how like how much volume you're doing, or is that? Right. Well, I, I could tell you that in the pipeline, there is $975 million worth of deals okay. in the pipeline. All right. So yeah, now, so this is now, uh, not insignificant. <laughs> no, no. And truth be told, some of that did not uh, germinate from the from the portal. It, it germinated through, say, my connections and whatever. A lot did come through the portal. So that's a combination of both. But there's, there's look, there's a lot of demand for financing these days. Mm -hmm. People are tired of doing it through you know, traditional sources where, where it's, you know, like I said before, I mean, it's, it's a broker calling three people and saying that's the market when they don't know that that's the entire market. They want it. They want to know that it's been, it's been vetted. They got the absolute cheapest interest rate. They got the absolute top dollar. I imagine this ends up streamlining the whole pro like shortening the whole amount of time it takes then for a borrower to, get the money that they need, you know, since they can do this transparency, get the upfront. And then so at one of the, one of the benefits of that is the whole thing comes together faster. 
a lot faster. I mean, we, we estimate 40% faster. And the reason is because you, you, you got time savings at three different spots. At the very beginning, to the extent that they have all the information and it's input correctly, which you know is a, a little bit of a caveat that they have to do that. Um, but if they do, then the, the soft quotes that they're getting are ones that, that are actionable. And so if that can be actionable within three days of, of submission, versus you know usually you would you you get the broker all the information questions back and forth uh offering memorandum distribute to the market you just went from 30 days to three days in that in that in the front end and then you know look on the on the on then we streamline the due diligence process as well so that's also a time saver so a process that you know typically took you know 60 to 75 days you know we can we can do in less than 30 days and where do you make money in in the deal? Well, it's it's no different than than a traditional uh, mortgage brokerage. The borrower is paying us, um, you know, a fee, but only if and when a deal closes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's no di you know no different. We're we're basically facilitating the marketplace, making sure everything goes smoothly. Um, you know, yes, we're, we 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 can still. It's not it's not as if we're handing things off to the portal. Um, you know, we're still doing the handholding um, and making sure everything goes smoothly while the while the uh, portal is doing its thing. So, and of that that volume that you're doing, um, is there any kind of geographic concentration, or are you seeing borrowers from all around the country? I mean, it's continental U.S. I mean, because we're New York based, um, I'd say that it's Eastern Seaboard for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, over my career, I've done more deals in Florida than I've done anywhere else. So I certainly um, still have a lot of connections down there. And that's what made, made us sort of advertise in the Miami Herald and so forth. Right. Um, so, and, and word of mouth, uh, you know, the deals that we most recently closed were in Florida and Georgia. So they, you know, and, and look, the, the whole Southeast is what's exploding on the, um, the housing side. So that's, that seems to be where the most need is. And in looking at that deal flow, are you able to generate any interesting market insights from 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 that? Like, are you seeing any any interesting shifts in property types or regions or even types of borrowers or anything like that 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 tells us broader broader things about the commercial real estate market right now? Yeah, yeah. Clearly, look, as a firm, we're very data driven, and and uh, Olive Tree is is makes their acquisitions based on data. And so, yes, as and that carries forward to our to, to true rate in that we see we see borrowers looking for, you know, look, higher leverage, lower interest rates, no surprise there. Um, but at the same time, they're looking for certainty of execution, which is why they what and, and, and they need it quicker. You know, the biggest problem that a lot of people have on acquisitions is they don't have two months to burn and have a lender leave them at the altar. They need to know for, for sure that they can close on the deal. So if we can streamline it down to 30 days, that gives them plenty of buffer. And they also know that they have multiple quotes so that if the first guy, for whatever reason, uh, falls down on them, that they have all the backup options ready to go also. So that's why it's helpful to people on the acquisition side. Um, and But to your point, yeah, I mean, look, people are, there's a lot of new players in the industry that are, are looking to take advantage of the growth in the Southeast and housing. And they want, you know, they need access to capital and maybe they don't have their go-to bank like in the old days where, where, you know, maybe somebody had Wells Fargo do every deal for them. And now these new players don't have that. So they, they, need, they need a portal to give them those new relationships. And we're talking about when you're talking about new players, what do you mean? You mean like new comp new real estate firms, new individuals that are looking to get into real estate? What, what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, I, well, for the, more often than not, it's somebody who's been in the industry for 20 years, maybe working for one of the larger companies that's now ready to go out on his own. And maybe he's doing it with, uh, with a couple of other high net worth people who don't have any real estate experience. And so they come together and they have the equity to do the acquisition and they have the real estate expertise because they've been in the industry, but they never bought anything on their own together, you know, as a new entity. Right. And that's the one thing that, you know, even though the banks have come back strong, you know, for the most part, they like to do repeat borrowing. I mean, that's their favorite, right? I sure, mean, sure. it's, it's a customer that you have a relationship and, and deposits and so forth. 
so that's where these these new time borrowers, you know, may may have the money and the and the and the uh, and the smarts, but they don't have that relationship. And that's where we can sort of help them form those relationships. So does that speak to you know any? So you're saying in a lot of these situations, it's it, it's it is somebody that's got some experience in the sector, but some of the money that they're they may be partnering with might be might be newer or might just be high net worth or family office that's looking to to make a deal in, in the industry? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, look, a lot of these um, high net worths, family offices, maybe they made their money in the stock market. Maybe they made their money um, from inheritance, you know, but mm-hmm. but they want to put that money in hard assets and they want to put it in real estate. Um, and how do they do that? Uh, they have to team with somebody that that has been in the industry and is is uh, knows what they're doing. But again, it might be it might be somebody who doesn't have a banking relationship you know, somebody that doesn't uh, have a hundred million dollar net worth where they can call their private wealth advisor. Right. So those those people need to access lenders that want to make, you know, prudent loans. And this is how businesses get built, right? I mean, you know, somebody, this is how those relationships end up starting. Yeah, exactly. And look, after you do the first one, you have a pleasant experience. You meet 20 different lenders, even though you only did it with one. You certainly had a good experience knowing that your deal uh, was, you know, the entire marketplace vetted it and, and uh, you you feel more comfortable that you got the best deal versus you do an acquisition, you're, you have a gun to your head and you have to take the first deal that comes along and you have no idea if it was the best deal or not. Right. So it's certainly it's certainly people want it, want this. Um, you know, as we like to say, I mean, 10X did this for sales, mm-hmm. Rocket Mortgage did it for residential mortgages. It sort of makes sense that um, that commercial mortgages are ready for this uh, um, new way of doing business. And you said from the, for, from your company's for perspective, or, or sorry, your company largely was financed out of the parent company. That's where like they, they decided yeah. to build this. That's right. We have no no VC or outside capital. Um, Olive Tree Olive Tree Ventures uh, started True Rate and and spent the money to build the infrastructure. We have programmers. We have a half a dozen programmers in Colombia. That's Colombia, the country mm-hmm. that are extremely smart, and they're the ones that got, have the portal um, working as well as it does. And when exactly did it launch officially? I mean, it, it 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 first opened last summer, so it's only been a little over a year. Um, you know, frankly, you know, we really didn't start doing big biz, big volume until I got here in April. Mm-hmm. So I'd say April was when it when it when it really started in in earnest. And now we're in this sort of the second version of the portal, where now it's to the point where where any borrower can can get on in the middle of the night and and get get quick response. And like you said, you're up to almost a billion dollar in in deal volume at this point. That's right, in in pipeline. So that that yeah. that's in various stages. Everything pipeline, from right. you know initial stage to getting your closing and so forth. Um, and and how many other how many other uh, how big is your team over there overall? So there's 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 four four people on my debt team, and there's another. Uh, we also started an investment sales platform where there's another four guys there. And those are originators, um, you know, on both sides. And then there's analyst and admin support beyond that. And do you have like a goal for how much, you know, you want to be doing annually um, or how much you want to grow the business annually or anything like that? Or is it still kind of being figured out? It, well, it's sky's the limit. I mean, the hard mm-hmm. part of always projecting volume is you, you never know the deal size, right? I right. mean, you do it, you know. Um, we can say we want to do two billion, but if you end up getting all five million dollar loans, it, it makes it hard to get there. So, I mean, look, it's 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 one where it'll grow exponentially, and uh, it's certainly off to an outstanding uh, start. We're seeing the marketplace, uh, you know, embrace the concept, and so it's just a matter of of you know get, doing it right and making sure that we're we're getting you know incorporating feedback that we get so to make it better. And how would you, you know, characterize just the state of commercial real estate in general? You know, here we sit, we're about to start the fourth quarter, 2021. We've been through this extraordinary period. It seems from, you know, where I sit that for the, you know, for the most part, things are going pretty, you know, like 
sectors are, are either some sectors were never phased at all did very well other sectors seem to be bouncing back at various paces but overall commercial real estate's kind of weathered this crisis pretty well and seems pretty well situated for the balance of this year and next year even with the kind of you know delta's kind of thrown a, a little bit of a curveball at some of this stuff but but overall it still feels like we're in the industry's in de- decent shape is that what do you think yeah, I mean, it, well, it's a two-tiered market. I mean, clearly there are sectors that, that haven't bounced back as quickly. I mean, office won't bounce back in earnest till the majority of people are back in their offices. Right. Uh, retail, you know, has come back, but obviously restaurants haven't and malls really um, haven't come all the way back yet. And hotels have come back for tourists, but they haven't come back for the business traveler. So that's sort of the, the um, what's still you know, has to come back while on the on the positive side, like I said, housing in the southeast, mm-hmm. um, new new build build for rent product is is uh, booming. And look, from our our, our um, standpoint, um, we, we need deal volume. We don't necessarily need it to go up or down. And it's extremely active right now in the market. I mean, there's there's transactions to be had on the refinance side because people didn't do a lot of volume in 2020. They're sort of making up for lost time. And there's a lot of acquisition financing. You know, the only time the the, bro- the brokerage has ever really gotten hurt was 2008, 2009, because people were frozen. Right. Um, besides for that one period, whether it's going up or down doesn't really matter from a brokerage standpoint. It's just, you need activity. Right. And it seems like for the most part too, like their delinquencies haven't been too bad. Um, you know, there's been little spikes here and there. I mean, I think there's been some properties, you know, some examples of properties going back to lenders, but overall, like the, like the volume of distress also doesn't seem like what we feared it might, you know, at one point we feared this might be a, a huge distress cycle and it doesn't really seem like, that's that's materialized. Well, the thing that I think the pandemic did is it took a page out of the 2009 playbook of if you if you sort of extend and forbear, mm-hmm. you don't necessarily have to liquidate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the FDIC days when you know they just liquidated everything in the in the, and and that sort of set set the uh, uh, the whole real estate business into a a, a tailspin. That if you give it time. And give give borrowers uh, and owners a chance to work out of their issues. So look at what look at hotels, for example. I mean, you know, in the in last summer, in the depths of COVID, it looked like hotels would never come back, and they've come roaring back. I mean, it's right. been a V shaped recovery, but only because the lenders were able to give them time and forbear, and 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 now they can sort of, you know, it, it worked out for both parties. Yeah, cool. So, is there anything about the market or about the business that um, that I didn't ask that that you think would be important to to point out right now. No, I, I think I think we covered most of it. I think you know it's it's simply a case of as you pointed out earlier, exposure. People realizing that that there is a better way of doing things versus the old fashioned way of of um, you know just calling one bank, just calling one broker who goes to three sources. Um, it's, it's, it's getting full exposure. I think once people know that we're out there and, and, you know, give it a try, so to speak, you know, put a deal through the portal, they'll, they'll be, they'll, they'll love it. I mean, look at, look at, you know, and we compare it to residential like Zillow and rocket mortgage. And and look, we like to think, obviously we're, we're doing a lot more sophisticated and, uh, uh, cerebral system. But the point is that if you do get immediate quotes, that's all anybody could ask for. Full transparency, streamlined process, and, and knowing you got the best deal at the end of the day. So I think that you know, we're, we're positioned to, to be the market leader in, in, in this and uh, you know, uh, thrilled at the, at the opportunity and even, even extend, extending it to the sales market as well. Well, Dan, I want to thank you um, so much for coming on the podcast and answering all my questions. Um, it was very interesting for me to hear how this is growing and um, I'd like to you know, check in and see how, how this all shakes out over the next uh, couple of years. No, it's terrific, David. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to speaking again. Gentlemen, this was a great podcast. Uh, Dan, again, thank you so much for being here. I, I like that there's hopefulness in your voice and David, obviously brings that out of people uh, talking about these different markets. David, of course, thank you for bringing Dan on the show. And our last thank you always goes to the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Commentary Podcast with David Bodmer.
If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when David comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your colleagues. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at WMRE, this is Eric Johnson inviting you back in two weeks for all the stories that matter to you. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Common Area Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of WMRE or Informa. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. As a commercial real estate professional, you manage complicated decisions every day, and to make the right call, you need the full story. Moody's Analytics CRE harnesses the expansive, integrated data and analytical expertise from across the Moody's organization, then curates it specifically for commercial real estate professionals. Learn how to make better decisions and improve CRE workflows with the Moody's Analytics CRE Solution Suite at reese.com. That's R-E-I-S dot com.